Hello and welcome to Fotokina TV, powered by Photo TV, broadcasting here from Fotokina in Cologne. And uh, the great thing about the fair is you get international guests delivered right into your studio. And this one must be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, works, works very well. David Misi. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you again. Hello, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, David, we met for the first time for, at Photokina two years ago. Yes, we did. And um, you were presented here as the Playboy photographer. <laughs> well, and, yeah. Uh, and you're back, and uh, there's new things to talk about. Yes, uh, it's now uh, David Misi 2.0, I guess you called it. Uh, it's me moving on and doing other things in the uh, what I call the real world. And that is working with a lot of various uh, clients, such as lingerie clients, uh, swimwear clients, um, sportswear fashion, that sort of thing. And, and just moving on and, and using what I learned at, at Playboy to uh, further myself in the, in the real world. Where does the, this change come from? Were you fed up with it? Or uh, <laughs> what's the reason behind it? What's, where's this challenge? Well, I think, it, I don't know, I don't want to say I was fed up with it, but I think it was more of, I had, I'd been with them for so many years, and I felt that I wanted to do more things for me, and instead of working always for the bunny, although I worked for them for like 23 years, it was uh, something that I wanted to do for myself. And, and I wanted to expand on my photography rather than just shooting for their type, their style of shooting. I wanted to go out and, and utilize what I had learned while being there and expand upon that and do some other things and, and explore uh, more in the world of photography. Would you say that's an important thing for a photographer to do, to reinvent oneself, um, to sort of keep the, the punch, the motivation to, to go out for new a projects? Absolutely. I think that for a photographer to be able to grow, to be able to expand his business, to become better at what he's doing, he needs to really uh, reach out and uh, stretch, him, stretch his imagination a little bit, stretch what he does with his lighting that sort of thing to, to become a better photographer. You, otherwise, you become, I think, I, I don't want to use the word stale, but that's about the best way to put it. You, you become um, d d too relied on, on your, your reputation, and, and it can only take you so far. You have to continue to expand, explore, and do really wonderful new images. To reinvent yourself also implies to learn. Yes. What are the things that you felt you had to learn in order to go into that new direction? Well, I think um, a large part of it was learning how to market yourself, uh, learning how to get your name out there among people to, to think of you as more than just another one of the Playboy photographers that had been with the magazine for so many years. Uh, it, it was to get out and, and become um, a, a, a person that's, that's capable of doing more than that. And, and to do that, I've had to uh, really uh, change some uh, marketing ideas, promotion pieces, uh, do a lot of shows like this, um, uh, make friends with uh, various manufacturers that, I've, uh, that, I, that I buy, use their, their equipment and that sort of thing to help market myself and to let people know that I am capable of shooting more than just the Playboy style, uh, but I can, I, mean, I can take that and do anything that's very glamorous looking to more editorial style to um, catalog. In fact, I do, most of my work now is catalog based. I'm happy you mentioned it because many photographers out there seem to think I'm a photographer, I take pictures, but they tend to forget about the marketing side. Uh, you, have to, you have to get clients, it's, it's sales, it's marketing, and you talked a lot about that on the stage of leading photographers uh, over there in uh, Hall 6, I guess, on the stage of Guido Carp. So what did you, right, tell, what right. did you tell people? I think, I think it was at Hall 6 or Hall 9? Uh, yeah. uh, well, anyway, with Guido Carp, yes. Uh, yesterday, uh, I think I spent a great deal of time of talking about um, what I ha needed to do to move away from that being considered a Playboy shooter and, and put myself out there among all the other photographers that are out vying for work. And to do that, I had to, to become more imaginative with my, my lighting. I had to, to expand upon what I'm doing, take what I had learned at Playboy, uh, dilute that a little bit by um, simplifying it to some degree and making it a, 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 an exciting image but not looking like it was shot for the magazine. It, it's, it's, it's getting out there and just really opening yourself up and, and, and really trying to you know, match wits with all those other pro photographers out there that's doing the same thing. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the results of David Misi 2.0. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's a, a picture on my, uh, on my computer. Uh, tell yes. me about it. This was a shot that I did. It's uh, outside, uh, I mean, outside Los Angeles in a little uh, area called Calabasas. 
This was shot, uh, we were doing actually just a, a test of a couple of models that I had met and I wanted to do something that had kind of a 50s kind of feel yet with modern uh, wardrobe. So I got with a wardrobe stylist that I know and we put this together out one day in the afternoon with a makeup artist, a stylist and uh, uh, an assistant. Uh, using, uh, I used the, uh, the ring flash on this and uh, natural light and it was just a combination of of ring flash and natural light that, and it gave it kind of, uh, and then the, the propping and everything gave it the, uh, kind of a 50s period feel. What adds to the 50s feel here as well is the, the, the colors. Now how much Photoshop is in such a picture? The thing? only thing that, that I did on this was I used a filter to create that kind of uh, uh, old style cast to it. Otherwise it's, it's right out of the camera. I don't do that much Photoshopping per se other than maybe a color correction or a color, slight color change. And for this, I just used a uh, filter out of a, uh, a, a filter set called Exposure. And they offer something, it's, like, it's almost like an antique -y look. Okay, let's have a look at another picture. This was shot in the Bahamas for uh, a Versace uh, ad for uh, a store in Atlantis that's located down in uh, the Bahamas. I was down there shooting for a, uh, a magazine called Passport to Paradise. And we were uh, asked to, to, actually, it was great because I was down there right at the right time and got this job to shoot an ad for this store. So we, we shot actually a couple of different things for them. This was a swimsuit. I had the model climb up, literally climb up on this ledge. And this again was shot with a uh, ring flash strobe mixed with sunlight. Uh, the only filter was also in exposure uh, and it basically desaturates the sky, makes it look almost black and white. Another one? Uh, this, was, this was also for that same job. This is a Versace dress. Uh, we shot this in, uh, again in the Bahamas on a small island. The wind was blowing, that, that is not a fan, that is the, bl the wind was blowing so terribly hard. But, but what made it so great was the fact that the wind blew at exactly the right time and the, and the shape of the dress was perfect when I shot. And I saw the dress moving and I shot at that moment hoping that I was able to capture it. And I did. And they loved the shot. And this ran full page and, and this is what they had selected for the ad. And um, then I overpowered the sun with the, 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 the ring flash. Uh, I shot this at like f11 and a half at 250th of a second or f16 wow. and that is the sun ball right up in the corner. How much power on the fill there? Oh, uh, a lot. A I lot, mean, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I use the, the, the ring flash, the, the Hensel ring flash that's 1200 watt seconds, the porty, and, and it just it works great. This was a test of a model that uh, I had met in Los Angeles. She was, she's uh, fairly new, but I, I loved her look. Uh, I, I live in a loft there, and so uh, I have great light coming in. And I wanted, to, I wanted to try out the 5D Mark II with its natural light capabilities. And so we literally just shot this natural light, no fill cards anywhere, nothing. And we just did a, a test that day, a series that day. She works, she moves very, very well, has a great look, has this great soft red hair. And literally it was just a, a, a day of fun. It is still a very central photo. Is that something that... Uh, I think that's sort of... I, I guess that's something I'm going to take with me forever. I mean, you, you, you try to... Uh, I think the, the reason that the models that I photograph tend to look sexy is I am, I'm, I've been told that I'm very good at uh, making uh, the, the woman feel very comfortable in front of the camera. I mean, all the models that I photographed yesterday for the show with Ed Guido's, uh, they all came up to me later and said, oh, thank you so much. I can't believe how comfortable you made me feel. And there was like four or five hundred people around us, literally watching us photograph her. And she had on like a bra and like little panties and stuff. And I mean, in front of four hundred people, that's a that's an amazing accomplishment for her. And I said, "Well, thank you. I, you're the one who did so great." And she goes, "Yeah, but you made me feel like there was nobody else around." And that's that's kind of part of what I take with me from working at the magazine for so long because that was one of the main things that I had to deal with: brand new models, never being in front of the camera needing to be able to be f comfortable enough to take all their clothes off and, and, and produce a very sensual, sexy picture. Okay. Another one? Oh, ah, that's the cover you got. Uh, yes, I got this cover after appearing here at Photokina in 2008. Photo Hits Magazine did a, uh, an article about me and uh, I sent them a, a lot of images and they chose this particular image. It's an uh, a image that I did for a, a, a book that I... May I show you? Yeah. A, a book that I did. Um, it's called Passion. It's a black and white book that I shot, and um, it's one of the images within the book. And I, uh, they chose that one, and that's what they ran on the cover. 
Now, we put this in here because um, it shows that you've become quite famous in Europe as well. I mean, you're an American photographer, and yes. um, it looks like uh, they're all asking for you over here in Europe. I think it's because Europeans have no problem with boobs. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate to say it quite so bluntly, but it's true, and I love it over here. I, I mean, uh, I, I have been doing, I've had articles written on me in uh, Italy, France, Germany. Uh, I've worked for clients in, in those same places, as well as the UK. And, and so I think that, yes, they appreciate what I can do with, with women in beauty and, and not have the, the sort of stigma that the Americans tend to place with a, a woman's bosom. And I, I just, it, I'm fed up with it. But I mean, it's like, I, I'd love to come over here and just work all the time. Oh, well, welcome to Europe. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> David, um, you've always shot for print, for the, for the Playboy, yes. for your books, and yes. you brought one of the, your prints with you right in front of us here. Yes. What's the importance of actual the actual printing for you? Um, uh, well, the, the print thing is, I, I think it's uh, it's tactile. It's something that I think we're always going to yeah. to have. People want to have something that's tactile that they can touch and pick up and look at, and 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 maybe even frame and put up on the wall. I, I uh, when I do presentations now, I actually use an iPad. Uh, it's, it's a, it's, that's where my portfolio is, on an iPad. And you can scan through or I can attach it to a plasma screen, that sort of thing, and, and do a presentation to an art director or whomever. But as far as a piece of art or something that a person would like to keep, a print is still the thing. And, and being from shooting for pages and, and print media all my life, uh, I, I still maintain that uh, the best presentation is something on a piece of paper and, and I just love doing that. And so when I shoot, I also shoot with an awareness of how to make the best image that is um, best for printing on the page uh, for, because of all the years at Playboy. Knowing how to control the shadows, how to control the highlights and still create an image that's very, very special and exciting. Great. Time is up. but. Uh David Measy 2.0. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I think that's I'll title that my book, David Measy 2.0. No, I'm kidding. No, I, I will. Uh, it's 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 very exciting. I think it's a it's a new place in my career. I'm really excited about moving on and doing some other things. Uh, that legacy that I carry with me at working at Playboy will always be there. I I mean it was it was my proving ground, so to speak, as a photographer, and and I'm I'm always going to have that. But now it's like I'm wanting to create some things that's all me, and it, it's about what I can do as a photographer that counts now, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, looking forward to 3.0 in yeah, two three years oh. time, next photo Well, kino. there you go, in the next uh, photo kino, I'll be back with 3.0. Thank you for being here Thanks, this Mark. time. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. See you on the next show of Photo kino TV, powered by Photo TV. Goodbye.